Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! Look at that kickfish right there. I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bull dolphin right there. We're going to go over what I consider to be the top five fish to catch on the South Florida reefs. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're going over what I consider to be the top five fish to catch over the reefs in South Florida. Now that doesn't mean we're anchored up and we're just bottom fishing. This includes any style of fishing over the reefs, which is, you know, bottom fishing, anchored up, drifting, slow pitch jigging, and trolling. You can do all of these techniques of fishing over the reefs. You're not just limited to doing what is considered stationary fishing. And now not only are we going to go over these top five fish, we're going to go over how, when, and where to catch them. All right, so let's do this. Coming in fifth place is the Barracuda. Now I know lots of folks consider the Barracuda a nuisance, but it is not. It is one of the great sport fish of the reef. It is one of the apex predators. And believe it or not, it's great at the dinner table. You got to watch which Barracudas you take and eat because they do carry a neurotoxin called ciguatera. So real quick, if you're gonna eat one, you wanna make sure that they are under 10 pounds. Around the eight pound range is good. If you get those bigger guys that are, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounders, you're gonna wanna throw them back. So the Barracuda is a great sport fish. Like I said, they're gonna show up starting in the early summer, at the end of May. And they're going to stick around for a solid six months until the water gets cold and winter arrives. So bear in mind, our seasons here in Southeast Florida are offset as to what you would think they are. Our winter starts in January. Our summer starts in late July, August. So just bear in mind that these fish are reef predators. They like the warm water. They're going to hang out when the water warms up. You're going to find Barracuda anywhere on the reefs from, you know, eight feet or so all the way into you know three or four feet and you're going to find them way out deep up to you know the edge of the reef where it planes off into the sand 200 feet they're all over they comb the reefs they may as well be the lions of the reef so they swim all over the water column too you can catch them in a multitude of ways the easiest way and most effective way to catch barracuda is trolling by my standards. You can catch them with spoons, either drone spoons or Clark spoons. That's the easiest, most productive way to get into the bite. If you're looking at going out and actually targeting barracudas, get you some shiny objects and go after them. Now they're also going to show up when you're bottom fishing. They're predators, you're chumming, they're, they're going to show up. Throw out some something live. They're also going to you know chase after your snappers as you're trying to get them to the boat and bite them in half. And that's why I say lots of folks consider them a nuisance, but they're not. Like I said, they're a great sport fish, which is why they are number five on the list. And that's the Barracuda. And coming in at number four on this list is the King Mackerel, also known as the Kingfish. This also is one of the great apex predators of the reef. So kingfish tend to hang out off the deeper edges of the reef, anywhere from let's say like 70 to about 180 feet. The most productive method of catching kingfish is trolling for them, planer trolling. You're going to use lures like these when you're planer trolling for them, a strip bait lure. This is my favorite one. What it is, is it's a green iridescent mylar sea witch followed by a little four and a half inch dolphin colored squirt squid and some double 5 hooks which you'll hook up your strip bait on, preferably a bonita strip. And we got it on about 16 inches of 40 pound wire leader. You're going to drop that out and you're going to planer troll the deep ledge of the reef. 
Now that's not the only way that you can catch kingfish. They will most definitely hit floated out live baits. You can also drift for them with stuff like frozen sardines. They will definitely take those, get you into the hookup, and you know that reel is going to start smoking. You're going to get that rod bending and it's on. Nothing more exciting than an initial kingfish run. One of the fastest fish in the ocean when they start peeling out line. You can also get them with one of my favorite styles of fishing, which is slow pitch jigging. Catch lots of kingfish, slow pitch jigging. And so when we're talking about catching kingfish, they make two runs around the southeast coast of Florida. The first run, which is where the big boys come in, they tend to show up at the end of spring, late March, heading into April and May, and then into June, and then they'll kind of peter off. And then come fall, right as the weather is starting to get a little nasty and the waters start to cool down, we get a second one of them, which are the smaller guys. They're not necessarily those big, you know, 30, 40 pound smokers. These are the ones that you're, are your juveniles. They're following the pack. And king mackerel make for a great meal, you know. Most often, you're going to want to do something like put some blackening seasoning on them, throw them on the grill, smoke them, and turn them into dip but you can do any recipe with them. And that's why the kingfish comes in at number four on the list. And coming in at number three, we have the yellowtail snapper. Yellowtail snapper fishing is something that I grew up doing. It's one of my favorite styles of fishing over the reef. Now this is where I'm gonna say, it's more likely that you're gonna to wanna to anchor up, get out your blocks of chum. I personally like to use a yellowtail jig with a double hook set up and using silver sides for bait. You're gonna Free line your line out, wait for that fish to rip that line out of your hand. You're gonna slam your bell shut, let that line come tight, set that hook, and then you're gonna retrieve your fish. If you get a good chunk slick going and you're in the right spot at the right time, it's not very hard to limit out on yellowtail. You can also troll up yellowtail in the shallows of the Florida Keys over the patch reefs. It's a very fun thing to do, it's very effective, but it's not as effective as going out and doing the traditional chumming and pulling them off the deeper ledges of the reef. If you're going for anchoring up and getting into that bite with yellowtail, I tend to do the 60 to 70 foot range. That's where I've had the most success and the most luck pulling yellowtail off the reef. And again, yellowtail are a warm water fish, so they're gonna show up at the end of spring coming into early summer, which is the month of May, and they're gonna hang out. They'll even hang out when the weather gets a little cold into fall. So when you're fishing for them in the fall, and the weather's getting cooler, the water's cooling down, you're gonna to start to get the apex predators coming in and swimming around with them, like Ciro mackerel. So it always makes for a great and exciting adventure to head offshore and do some yellowtail fishing. And that's why yellowtail snapper are number three on this list. And coming in at number two, out of the top five fish over the reef, is the red grouper. One of my favorite grouper to catch over the reefs. So red grouper tend to hang out anywhere from 50 to 60 feet, all the way out to the very ledge of the deep reef, which is about 200 feet here off South Florida. So as you go in shallower, you will get those keepers. Your periodic, you know, 20 incher that's just barely keepers. More often than not though, you're gonna get the shorts and you're gonna to have to throw them back. I find for a quality size red grouper, you've gotta go out a little deeper between 150, closer to 200 feet. That's where you get those nice 24 inch, 30 inch red groupers. Those nice ones that weigh about 30 pounds and they're gonna take up you know almost your whole cooler. Now grouper are seasonal fish. You're only allowed to catch them at certain times. And that's dictated by the FWC. But I find the most prime months to go after grouper where they're really biting because they're gorging, they're getting ready to go and mate is the month of August. That for me has historically been the most productive month for catching big red grouper. So when you're going for these red grouper, you're gonna to wanna to drop down some bigger gear. Maybe some, you know, mid-sized conventional reels. You can either use live bait like pinfish if you're down in the Keys. Or if you're up in the Tri-County area of Miami and Palm Beach and Broward, they will definitely eat pilchards and goggle eyes. They're also known to eat yellowtail. So if you go and you catch some yellowtail and you want to go grouper fishing, drop them out deep, 
that's what those big quality groupers are going to munch on. You can always drop out dead baits, frozen baits, hunks of bonita, squid. And one of my more favorite ways to go after these big red groupers is slow pitch jigging. I've caught several nice red grouper over the years slow pitch jigging. I find it to be almost more effective than live baiting them up. And that's why the red grouper is number two on my top five list of fish to catch over the reefs in South Florida. And coming in number one on the top five list is the mutton snapper. This is the great snapper of South Florida. It is one of the most highly sought after prize trophy fish that anglers go out week after week trying to catch. So mutton snapper are found all over reefs. Big ones too. You're gonna catch them in the shallows of the patch reefs down in the Florida Keys in eight feet of water. Troll them up. You're gonna troll them up with things like this, the white bucktail jig. They're going to hit it hard and they're going to sound right to the rocks, which is a short distance away. So as soon as they hit, be ready for the fight. You're going to want to try and get them over the sand and keep them out of those rocks. They're also in the 30 to 50 foot range. And my most favorite depth to catch them is out off the deeper ledges. These are where I find the more hefty, bigger boys out in that 150 to 200 foot range. Like I said, over the shallows and the patch reefs in the Florida Keys, I like to troll them up. But over these deeper ledges of the reef, you can get them in a multitude of ways. You can drift for them with frozen sardines and using what's called a mutton rig, which is essentially a fish finder rig with about a 25 to 30 foot leader on it. Remember, when you're fishing for mutton snapper, you're going to want as little terminal tackle as you can stand. They're very skittish and they will avoid anything that looks unnatural. And now don't be shy to try and live bait them up. Also, drop down a pilcher. Drop down a pinfish. It depends upon what bait fish is local to your area as to what you're going to go for them. And another super effective way, which is, as I've gone over before, one of my favorite techniques to yank up these big giants is slow pitch jigging. I have honestly caught some of the biggest trophy size mutton snapper in my life slow pitch jigging and so what i've found is is that the warmer the water is the deeper the bigger ones go so if you're in let's say late spring early summer in july august september those bigger mutton snappers are going to be out deeper the water's warmer as the water tends to cool off they will come in shallower so if we're talking you're fishing in October, November-ish, and the water's cooling off, December, whatever, you're gonna wanna go in shallower. That's where it'll be hanging out in those warmer waters. And mutton snapper just makes one heck of a delicious meal. And that's why mutton snapper is the number one fish to catch over the reefs of South Florida. All right, folks, and so there you have it, my top five list of fish to catch over the reef of South Florida and a little bit on how, when, and where to go after these fish, especially if you're looking for tips on how to target them. Like I said, reef fishing is not just stationary fishing. Don't think of the reef as a place where you've got to drop in that anchor and sit all day. Use it for what it is. It's a living, breathing organism. Fish are hunting. They will hit troll lures. Fish can be corralled by chumming. Fish at rest can be enticed by jigging. And that is what makes the reef of South Florida such a dynamic place to go and seek out and target these top five fish. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about what I consider to be the top five fish to catch over the reefs of South Florida. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.